let us understand what is the need of distribution sort or what are the advantages of distribution sort. It can be proved that the sorting algorithms that involves comparing pairs of values can never have a worst case time complexity better than order of n log n. Enhance the limit of speed for comparison based sorting algorithm is order of n log n. And thus, distribution sort are developed to outperform the comparison based sorting algorithms. Now let us take a situation. Suppose we want to sort a file of 60 GB which is distributed across 6 different machines. And we want final output to be sorted individually for each machine and the largest element of machine 1 should be smaller than the smallest element of machine 2 and similarly the largest element of machine 2 must be smaller than the smallest element of machine 3 and similarly for all of the rest machines. So for this type of situation comparison based sorting algorithm will not work efficiently because comparison based sorting algorithm requires two main operations first is comparison between two elements and second one is swapping two elements and these two operations will require a communication between the machines and we know that inter machine communication is not is not as fast as the communication between the hard disk and the RAM. So this will be the bottleneck situation for comparison based sorting algorithms. So in this type of situation distribution sort will be more efficient. So let us see how this situation can easily or can be implemented more efficiently with the help of distribution sort. In distribution sort, what we will do is that we will distribute the input to multiple intermediate structure and then we will combine them as an output. In this situation, we are having input in six different machines and the intermediate structure that I am taking over here is another six different machines. I am assuming that the data that I am having is between the range from minus 10 to plus 30. Now I need to split this data into this intermediate structures and for that I have selected some pivot elements and that are minus 5, 10, 14, 20 and 25. Now while splitting the data we will put the element in the data A if it is less than 5, less than or equal to 5. Then we will put the element in data B if it is greater than minus 5 and less than or equal to 10 and same for rest of all. In data will be put to data F if it will be greater than 25. So with the help of this splitting, it guarantees that the data, data A will be less than the data B and that will be less than data C, that will be less than data D, then it will be less than the data E and finally the data F will be larger. So by this splitting, we now don't require the intermachine communication we now only need to sort this data in the intermediate structure and we will get the final result or output as a sorted data. So this was the case of the distributed algorithm where individual subset was separately sorted on different processor and then combined. But distribution sorting algorithm can also be used on the single processor. And the common example of that we know is bucket sort, counting sort, 
and reading sort. Let us understand counting sort. As an example, we are trying to sort this array into an ascending order. Counting sort works well when we are having the elements in a small range. And for this case, the range is from 0 to 3. The first part or the first step of counting sort will be counting the occurrence of each numbers. For this example, for there is all, only one occurrence of 0 and three occurrence of 1 and there are two occurrences of 3 and zero occurrences of 2. And we can store these numbers in an array of length 4. The second step will be calculating the prefix sum array of of what we have created in the step 1. So the second number will be 3 plus 1 which will be 4. The third number will be 4 plus 0 which is 4 and the fourth number will be 4 plus 2 which is 6. The next step is shifting this whole array to the right side by one cell. So we will be discarding the last number 6 and for at the index 3 we will put the element at the index 2 which is 4 and at index 2 we will be putting the element that is at index 1 which is 4 and at element 1 sorry at element so at index 1 we will put the element which is at index 0 that is 1 and at index 0 we will put 0 the array we get in this final third step is the starting indices for the range of number we are having that is from 0 to 3 after step 3 we are going to initialize another a new array which is of the same size of the our initial array which is 6 in this case then we will iterate through the original array so for the first element 1 for this element 1 we will check we will check the starting index of it from the array that we have created in the step 3 and that index is 1 then we will increment the starting index by 1 and this is to ensure that when 1 will be increment and this is to ensure that when 1 will be repeated second time it gets different indices than the previous one and we are going to do this for all the elements of the array until we get the last element and this process makes counting sort a stable sorting algorithm that means for different in instances of the same value the order in original and the sorted array will remain same will remain same let us see some properties of counting sort the first is as i said it's a stable sorting algorithm and the time complexity is big o of n plus k where n is the number of items that we have in our array and k is the range of numbers that we are having in our original array and the space complexity is again big o of n plus k for this counting sort as we are creating an entire new array and an array of length k for storing the starting index. Thank you.
If you really like this video then please subscribe our channel and like this video. It takes only 1 or 2 seconds for you but it is very important for us. So now let's end up this video here and thank you.